January 26th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Matthew chapter 26 from the New Testament. When Jesus had finished saying all these things, he told his disciples, You know that after two days the Passover is coming, and the Son of Man will be handed over to be crucified. Then the chief priest and the elders of the people met together in the place of the high priest, who was named Caiaphas. They planned to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. But they said, Not during the feast, so that there won't be a riot among the people. Now while Jesus was in Bethany at the house of Simon the leper, a woman came to him with an alabaster jar of expensive perfumed oil, and she poured it on his head as he was at the table. When the disciples saw this, they became indignant and said, Why this waste? It could have been sold at a high price and the money given to the poor. When Jesus learned of this, he said to them, Why are you bothering this woman? She has done a good service for me. For you will always have the poor with you, but you will not always have me. When she poured this oil on my body, she did it to prepare me for burial. I tell you the truth, wherever this gospel is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Then one of the twelve, the one named Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priest and said, What will you give me to betray him into your hands? So they set out thirty silver coins for him. From that time on, Judas began looking for an opportunity to betray him. Now on the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came to Jesus and said, where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, The teacher says, My time is near. I will observe the Passover with my disciples at your house. So the disciples did as Jesus had instructed them, and they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he took his place at the table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, I tell you the truth, one of you will betray me. They became greatly distressed, and each one began to say to him, Surely not I, Lord. He answered, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man will go as it is written about him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for him if he had never been born. Then Judas the one who would betray him said, Surely not I, Rabbi. Jesus replied, You have said it yourself. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And after taking the cup and giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood, the blood of the covenant that is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, from now on, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. After singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, This night you will all fall away because of me, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Peter said to him, If they all fall away because of you, I will never fall away. Jesus said to him, I tell you the truth. On this night, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even if I must die with you, I will never deny you. And all the disciples said the same thing. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to the disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and became anguished and distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is deeply grieved, even to the point of death. Remain here and stay awake with me. Going a little farther, he threw himself down with his face to the ground and prayed, 
My father, if possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not what I will, but what you will. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. He said to Peter, So couldn't you stay awake with me for one hour? Stay awake and pray that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away a second time and prayed, My father, if this cup cannot be taken away, unless I drink it, your will must be done. He came again and found them sleeping. They could not keep their eyes open. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same thing once more. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour is approaching, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us go. Look, my betrayer is approaching. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd armed with swords and clubs sent by the chief priest and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him. Immediately he went up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and took hold of Jesus and arrested him. But one of those with Jesus grabbed his sword, drew it out, and struck the high priest's slave, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back in its place, for all who take hold of the sword will die by the sword. Or do you think that I cannot call on my father, and that he would send me more than twelve legions of angels right now? How then would the scriptures that say it must happen this way be fulfilled? At that moment, Jesus said to the crowd, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me like you would an outlaw? Day after day I sat teaching in your temple courts, yet you did not arrest me. But this has happened so that the scriptures of the prophets would be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him and fled. Now the ones who had arrested Jesus led him to Caiaphas, the high priest, in whose house the experts in the law and the elders had gathered. But Peter was following him from a distance, all the way to the high priest's courtyard. After going in, he sat with the guards to see the outcome. The chief priest and the whole Sanhedrin were trying to find false testimony against Jesus so that they could put him to death. But they did not find anything, though many false witnesses came forward. Finally, two came forward and declared, This man said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and rebuild it in three days. So the high priest stood up and said to him, Have you no answer? What is this that they are testifying against you? But Jesus was silent. The high priest said to him, I charge you under oath by the living God. Tell us if you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said it yourself. But I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and declared, He is blasphemed. Why do we still need witnesses? Now you have heard the blasphemy. What is your verdict? They answered, He is guilty and deserves death. Then they spat in his face and struck him with their fist. And some slapped him, saying, Prophesize for us, you Christ! Who hit you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A slave girl came to him and said, You also were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it in front of them all. I don't know what you're talking about. When he went out to the gateway, another slave girl saw him and said to the people there, This man was with Jesus the Nazarene. He denied it again with an oath. I do not know the man. After a little while, those standing there came up to Peter and said, You really are one of them too. Even your accent gives you away. At that, he began to curse, and he swore with an oath, I do not know the man. At that moment, a rooster crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said. 
before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. God, I have, I have such a hard time reading these passages. And initially, I decided that I was having a hard time reading these because of all the horrible things that people were doing to you. Because I love you so much, but then as I stop and, and meditate and pray about what I'm reading, I realize that we do these things to you all the time. I so want to be the woman who, who would take a, a year's worth of wages for oil to anoint your head out of respect and honor and humbleness and love and joy. But yet I'm afraid that too often we fall into the Judas Iscariot group who sold you out for 30 silver pieces about seven, eight thousand dollars our money right now. And instead of selling you out for seven or eight thousand dollars, although sometimes we do that with our jobs, sometimes we're Judas Iscariot to you because we're embarrassed by what our friends will think. Or we take the words that our friends or the people we know online to heart and we change our version of our relationship with you for them being more fearful of our relationship with them than you we are all the the disciples who scattered as soon as trouble happened god my heart broke so much the other day a, a woman that i've known Gosh, for probably 10 years, 11 years. You healed her from cancer. We, we honestly didn't know if she was going to make it. And you chose to create healing in her life and healing for her family. So she could still continue to be with them and do the things that she does. And yet I watched her the other day completely deny you to all of her friends on Facebook. Actually making fun of you. Not saying you didn't exist, but making fun of you. <sighs> and making fun of the people who follow you. God, I just want to apologize for all the times that I am Peter. Or I am Judas Iscariot to you. All the times I've betrayed you and betrayed my faith. All the times that ego and anger and jealousy and frustration and impatience have been more important than my relationship with you. God, I ask today for strength seem to ask for that a lot. Today I ask for strength. I ask for strength in your word. I ask for strength in my relationship with you. And I ask for strength that I continue to work on becoming the woman who worships you and follows you and loves you and trusts you and is proud to say that I am a Christian who has a relationship with you that I get wrong every day, but that I have a relationship with you and that I love other people like you do enough to tell them about you, even on those days when they don't want to hear about you, to do it with grace. So when they are ready and when their heart is ready and at the time you've chosen, they can reach out your, their hand to you and you will take it. God, I came into this prayer wanting to apologize for what all those people did to you on their behalf. That I really need to apologize for all the things I've done to you. 
and all the things I've done to your people. <sighs> Allow me to go throughout this day today and fix that. <laughs> and be the amazing godly woman that you created me to be. And shine that amazing light you've put in my heart to so many people. And never let anybody who is in need come to me and have me turn them away or have me fall asleep on them. Thank you for believing in me, God. <laughs> Sometimes I'm not sure why. I'm not sure why you would believe in me, but you do. And you love me with a love that I can't even imagine. But I thank you. In your son's name we pray. Amen.